the very sane Marianne Fay as well joins me this morning. How are you, Marianne? Very well, thank you. Oh, dear, I tell you what, I began to talk like you when that um, Joe Fasine was, was <laughs> on, on television. It just got to the stage where our wardrobe lady at the time here, Nadia Benussi and myself, used to have these conversations in that <laughs> language. I'm glad it didn't translate onto the show for you. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, get, getting back to sort of when you were a little person, mm -hmm. quite often people who are very funny and can sort of do all these outrageous things when they get to be older people were quite sort of shy, retiring children. Were you like that? Yep. I was... <laughs> I was cross-eyed and... Um, Has that changed? No, I can't see anything. I just, if I have a bit of alcohol, one of the eye goes straight <laughs> really? in. Yeah, I need glasses, really. Yeah. Um, and, one, you know, perspectacled and, and <laughs> look at school photos and possibly the biggest dag that ever lived. Truly. So, but were you shy as well? Yeah. Or were you terribly shy? shy. No, I couldn't, I didn't really speak for the first 10, 12 years of my life. <laughs> You're making up for it now. <laughs> and I didn't walk till I was really old because I couldn't see the floor. Yeah. So I just sort of sat there. Mm. Like that. Yeah. Until you how? But I mean. Until I was about form two. Then suddenly I got confident. And then, and then you started to perform as a, as a young, young girl? A bit, yeah. I suddenly started doing, I did charades at school and school plays and thought this is fun and liked it. And so I went on and did what I did. did you, do you have memories though of a, a first or an early performance? that were either sort of embarrassing or fun or...? Um, no, I've asked people about me and most people who went to school with me don't even remember me. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Mitchell's wife I went to school with. Oh, you yeah. And she doesn't remember you. What a shame. <laughs> <laughs> she remembers a little bit later on. No, no one remembers much. I, don't, I think I was the most unnotable person that ever lived, really. Oh, thank goodness that's all changed. But I'm perfectly got a bit happy. Older. Oh, you, you, were you happy about being I, like I liked that cats. You like cats? No, like... I was a complete cat lover. In fact, I intend to be one of those old mad cat ladies when I'm about 90. Yes, I think I could most probably be one of those just, too. Just a house with cats? Yeah, I'm quite happy with my one cats there, around one the place. There, and... One round the neck. Do you have them at the moment at your house? Not enough. How many? Only the one, because my old other one died. Oh. And so I'm looking forward to buying some new ones. In fact, it was my birthday yesterday and I'm hoping my husband will buy me one. Oh, well, didn't he? He hasn't got you one present. yet? Not yet. That's a belated birthday yes, present, and we that hope. Was a very strong hint. <laughs> <laughs> now, now listen, Kylie. Yes. Kylie Mole, I mean, did she take over your life as she sort of started to take over mine during that era? Um, it was a difficult one because there was so much publicity on her and so much every newspaper article I picked up was written in Kylie Mole speak and mm. um, certainly, yeah, it was big like that. And it was important for me to get away from it for a while. Mm. It, it took over, it, it, I think it's nice for things to do well, but mm. if they do too well too quickly, mm. um, it takes over and you don't enjoy it much. Yes, too much of it too, yeah. probably, you know, because she was a very strong character. Too, yeah, wasn't and she? I enjoyed doing it because she was someone with a point. She actually did, she did coin a person in a sense. Oh, she certainly did. Yeah, and, and I think that she had a lot to say and that was good. But if I was somewhat less shy, I might have continued to do it for longer and so forth, but I didn't really like the attention it received, so I pulled back a bit. Was she sort of based on anything within you, do you think, or was she based on a, a sort of a, a whole uh, sort of bucket full of people? Bucket full, but I think probably that she was the person I'd like to have been at school. Yeah, I'd love to have said rotten things to teachers and stuff like that, and I never did. I was just had my hand up and getting 100 for Christian Doctrine. <laughs> so Kylie is the alter ego. Yeah. Things have certainly changed. Things <laughs> yes, have certainly yes. changed. Now, your husband and you have a sort of a fairly successful partnership on and off the field, as they say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but the bedroom sketches on the comedy company with Ian, um, I mean, how much were they actually taken from? Did you, did you ever sort of sit down and discuss what you'd argue about or did, were they just taken from perhaps arguments that you might have had? What would usually happen is I'd say, Ian, the only time we ever get to see each other is when we go in to tape the bed scenes. He'd say, rubbish, we talk all the time. Then we'd have an argument. I'd write it down, submit it to him. He'd rewrite it so he wins. And that's what would go to air. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, how many takes do you sometimes have to do for, to, to get that? Or, or do you sort of, are you a one-take person? We generally did. That was always in front of an audience. And, in fact, everything I did was always live. And so I did it in one take. I tend to choose characters so that if you lose the auto cue, which is what you read while you're doing this thing, I choose Kylie so I can go like this and panic for a while and make things up while the auto cue catches up. Joe for scene who just forgets and say anything that comes into her head, so she's fine. Yeah. Bed scenes is always in, he talks a lot, so that was fine. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they're all done live, usually one take. In fact, I don't think we ever did two on a bed scene. Oh, that's, that's a good effort. 
Yeah, it was, know. especially given we never got to rehearse them. Oh, so, well, so it sort of it eases a lot of that marital tension, I would think. Sort of get, once a week you get in there and you have a go at each other, mm -hmm. and then you can have a good old laugh about it and go out to dinner and have a nice time. If you had time. <laughs> if you had time. Talking of time, because, I mean, those times were sort of pretty heady days for you, weren't they? I yeah. mean, really, I mean, as you said earlier, you really needed to get away from the show and away from the characters because they were sort of taking over your life. Yeah, it was, it was too much. And also, I was very keen on having children and mm. actually keeping a rather low profile for a while, which I've been doing. You have done. You've had two I've, since that time. No, I've had one. Oh, I thought you'd had two. No, I'd like to have had two. Oh, why did I think you'd have two? I don't know. Anyway, you've only had one. Yeah, Tell I've me about one. the one. And I've got two. No, it's because I've got two. I've got one from a That's previous right. marriage and I've got this one. That's right. And so I've got a one-year-old and it's absolutely delightful. And, um, and everything's working out very well. It's, it's nice. I'm back to normal. Now, the important thing is if you're going to write comedy, if you're going to write comedy about people, it's impossible to do if you're well known because nobody sort of acts normal when you're around. That's right. Every, they are all, people are impressed by fame and so you're not able to write how people normally are. So I actually found that I was losing the ability to write characterizations. Yeah. Because I wasn't meeting people the same way I would normally do. Have you got that back? Do you feel as though yeah, you Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's, it's great, in fact. I wouldn't swap it. If you, that's why I think if you're going to get well known, try and do it under another face. <laughs> Look different and then life will be easier. <laughs> I don't know whether how we can sort of organise that. There's not, not much you can do about it once it happens, is there, really? But, but apart from all of that, just before we leave, what's Ian mainly working on these days? Are you working on something together? Is there something that perhaps you would one day really like to do? A children's show, perhaps? Yes, I would love to do. In fact, I would love to do a children's show with... The lovely Slim Mark Mitchell. The lovely Slim Mark Mitchell. He's <laughs> wonderful, isn't he? Yeah. Mark is delightful and, and I think his, his talent for characterisation is just brilliant. Yeah, you're and right. Yeah, we were thinking that we might like to do a show together. I was going to ring him this afternoon and tell him, but he'll probably know Oh, now. he might know now yeah. if he, he sees the show. Yeah, I won't have to ring him. And there you go, Mark Mitchell, and offer too good to refuse. Mark, you could be the new aggro. Who knows? Only joking. By the way, Ian McFadden's new series, Bingles, will be coming up soon, so look out for it.